The best free vector graphics software is the one used by some of the largest companies in the world. Figma is a design software that you're going to be blown away by. This software is used by some of the biggest companies in the world. Airbnb, Zoom, Walgreens, Microsoft, Slack, you name it, Figma is used as a vector software and a graphic design software to build products, build apps, build websites, and build icons and design vector graphics. Now you can see here in this first little demonstration, Figma actually comes with a planner whiteboard, which is called Fig Jam, and then you can go into designing. And if you might notice here, you can actually design with other people inside of Figma all, all at the same time. Now, you don't have to do that. In fact, you can co-create in the same space. However, you can also prototype and dive even deeper all the way to the development side. But if we're just looking at this as a design tool, it's an online design tool. It works on Mac and on Microsoft Windows, and it works online, so in your browser too. Figma allows you to do a lot of things smarter, not harder. So laying out items and having a fully responsive auto layout to designing for any device and then also building out design systems, which is one of the biggest time saving and consistency pieces that you can do in design. The design tools are built for collaboration, allowing you to leave comments, design with others, you can branch off into other iterations of the design. And then, of course, the vector design side of this. You can auto-adjust layers in your layouts. You can also create vectors, which we'll take a look at here in a second. You can also customize type. So a lot of type is variable, so you can tweak a lot of the different assets and elements. And then it's a very, uh, they call it an extensible platform, but basically it means that scales out, right? There's a whole community where you can download files, and I'll show you some of those. There's, uh, you can integrate plugins into this. So people build plugins uh, for Figma. So if you're used to something like Illustrator and you know doing plugins in Illustrator, it's a lot easier here in Figma to work with plugins. Now I talked about the design systems. So the design system, if you're a solo person or you are working on a team or you just wanna be able to collaborate, this design system concept is one of the best where you can design things that can be reused in your, well, in your whole project. And also it easily scales and, you know, they call it like a multiplayer platform, which makes design collaborative and multiplayer and drives consistency. That's one of the big things with design systems. You can also scale your designs easily. So you can switch things out. You can create variables in your design. I mean, this gets more and more deep as you go along to the point that even creating an experience like a prototype with movement, animation, motion is something you can do all within Figma. You can connect your different slides together. You could create a presentation. You could create an actual app prototype for a mobile app. You can create different flows. You can show how something would work, how something would animate. And that's some of the awesome things that Figma can do, all for free. Can you believe that? This software is free. There is also a pro version upgrade, which includes a few things. If you're a freelancer working with multiple projects, different clients, you would probably want that so you can separate things out and organize your projects better. However, you can create an infinite number of projects or I should say designs in Figma all for free. Let's get over to the Figma actual program. You can download the desktop version, which I did. Uh, so this is Figma here. And by the way, there's a link in the description you could click to get started and you can get started for free and start looking at this here with me actually. So Figma has vector design tools up here at the top, the top bar. It has a layers panel on the left and an assets panel. You can uh, click on the assets tab. You can click on this, which is like pages within each of your designs. So you can think of, you have these projects and then you can have pages inside the project that are totally different, almost like having different design files within one file. On the free version, you can have up to three. On paid, you can have as many as you want. But 
most of the time, I mean, if I'm an illustrator or something, I just open up a project and it's all in one project anyway. However, you can lay things out like that. So we have the layers panel over here, assets. On the right hand side, we have a couple tabs. One is design. If you're from the Adobe land, uh, this is kind of like the properties panel. So you click on something and suddenly you have a lot of different properties. You have the height and the width of your frame that you clicked on. You have uh, some different options for icons and, and things in here with components and variables, which we won't get into, but you have layer, uh, not layer, you have your layer styles essentially. So like whether this layer is pass through or the opacity of it, you've got fills and strokes and selection colors, all kinds of things. The other thing that you have is the prototype tab that I talked about. So you could create these interactions and flows and then test out that prototype. We can look at that on a bigger design here in a second. Now, if I go back to this design tab, so we have this little uh, cloud, like maybe thunderstorm icon. This icon is actually created here in Figma. If I double click on any sort of uh, element here, I can see in the layers panel, as I drop down this group, I have a bunch of different vectors that have been created inside of this group. So we'll be able to take a look at these here in a second as soon as I go to the main component of this icon. But I wanted to show you that uh, you know, solo version kind of have it isolated. So if we go to the main component and we take a look at this, we have, in this case, we have a ton of different icons in here. Let me zoom in on this guy. What we can actually do is double click in here to begin to make edits on this. If we get inside of this component deep enough into the group itself, you can see we have this cloud and we have all the different anchor points that are a part of this cloud. And so up here, if we double click out of that, up here we have like the selection tool, like a move tool and a scale tool. We have frames and frames play an important part in auto layout. They play an important part in uh, just containing things. They're kind of like art boards. We also have shape tools so we can build shapes. We also have the pen tool and a pencil tool, the type tool as well. And then some of these are like resources, like plugins. You have the hand tool, which is also just space bar if you want to use it as a shortcut key. And then you can make comments. So remember that multiplayer collaborative side of this. So for something like this, you can actually see that if we double click in on this, we can see all of the different vector elements here. So all the different anchor points and the fill and the stroke. You can see the fill over here is in black. And we can adjust these anchor points. I could click and move them around. I could, uh, you know, scale the, um, the handles in and out to make adjustments to this cloud icon. I could also use curvature tools and click and drag on different paths and adjust curves. So I can make this curve way inside like that. Now all of a sudden the cloud has a bite taken out of it. So that's kind of some of the little aspects that you can do here to edit different vectors. If we were to go create a new file, just by clicking that plus icon and clicking on new design file. Oh, actually we're in the team project right now. So that makes sense. I actually need to click in a different spot to create a new design file because I'm creating this in a team on accident. So we would exit out of this and go back and we would actually not create a team. We would just create a new design file within my overall files, not a team. So that's how you can organize things into teams and projects. But the free version you can just create as many of these design files as you want with up to three pages each. So if we were to create something like if I click on this and I create, for instance, a star, we could just click and drag out here, hold shift, and I've got this star created. Now what can I do with this star? Well, I can just click and drag on the different ratios of the star to make some edits here round off some corners. I can see some of these effects that I'm doing over here. So like how many points does this star have? Is it six? Is it three? Is it four? Do I make a ton? Does it look like a gear? Do I adjust more on the percentage of the corners? Do I adjust the corner rounding? So all of these different things are adjustable over here in the design tab. So this is kind of like the properties tab, as you remember. We also have a fill for this star. So I could click on the fill. I could fill it with a gradient. I could fill it with an image. I could even fill it with a video if I wanted to. And inside of here, we could give it some color. Then I could go to stroke and just add a stroke really quick. And we could add a white stroke to this guy and we could make that stroke 
really large and right now it's on the inside but I could flip that to the outside just by clicking on that right there so as you can see we're um, I mean we're just building and building and building upon this vector graphic we can add effects to it like a quick drop shadow or even a layer blur or inner shadow we could also export this graphic in the PNG JPEG SVG or PDF so the top two bitmap the bottom two vector assets now the prototyping side of this is pretty crazy too. If I double click on this before we get to that, you can see that double click in allows me to edit all the anchor points individually. So this is, if you're used to vector programs, you can get in here with the pen tool, you can get in here with the bend tool. You also have a paint bucket option, which I don't generally use, but you have all of these options here that you can make adjustments to your design and your graphic, and you can create whatever you want. And the pen tool, pen tool works just like any other pen tool click on that pen tool we can uh, create different shapes with it just by clicking and creating points we can click and drag to create curves I love the bend tool because I can literally come in here on any line and create the curve that I want just by clicking on that line and dragging out all this stuff and kind of getting that curve the way I want so you can see I just created that curve incredibly easily without even affecting the handles directly I just Hold the line with the bend tool. You can also create text elements. So there is a type tool. Uh, we can create, let's do text element here. And inside of the text options over here on the right, see once we click on that, it knows this is a text object. So I can do anything I want here. I can, you know, drop this down, make it 64 uh, font size. I could adjust this to be bold. I can do anything with the line height, which is called you know, like line spacing or letting, uh, and we have a lot of different text options. Now we're just touching the surface of what this program can do. Let's take a look at something that's a little bit more designed out. Here is a social app completely designed here in Figma. This thing is kind of crazy. I mean, look at all these different pages. We call these all artboards if you want to. So all these different artboards, and this is a flow. So a flow, let's try to zoom in here would be like, hey, this is the first page you're on. When you click next, you go to this page. When you click next, this page, this page, right? And so like, as you were to design out this app, you would be designing uh, all the different pages of it. And then, remember the prototyping side? We come up here to prototype, and all of a sudden we see that all this stuff is all linked together in some way. So we've prototyped all of this stuff together with different interactions. And these interactions, well, we're not gonna to get too deep into this. I wanna show you that we can come up here and uh, select this home page, hit play on this guy. Actually, no, that's the wrong one. We're gonna drop this down. We're gonna do present and not preview. So we're gonna present, which takes us into this presentation mode. And inside of here, what do you think we can do? We can scroll through our design. We can select things in our prototype. We can go through, we can hit the play. What's the next page? Oh, cool, did you see that bounce in? You know what, I don't really wanna play this anymore. I think I wanna go back, so we click this button. Oh, look, it bounces out. So there's so much stuff you can do. Look at this, this is a, a horizontal scroll as well as a vertical scroll. We have things that we can click on. Add your own voice, where does that take us? Oh, that's a premium feature. You know, so you can go through and select different things and you know see the payment process like all of these all of these are just designed here and we de we design or prototype the interactions to get between the two you can see the page we were just on was like this payment page right here and there is a slide that takes us to this right so this is the flow right we clicked yes right here and it took us to this payment page so this is uh you know vector graphic design on at a high level here but overall you can do a lot with figma on the free version in fact i'm on the free version that's why we that's why we saw that upgrade to pro on that other project and speaking of other projects if we go home really quick so we have lots of different projects in here this would be like our home page in the lower right we have explore community the community has a ton of different assets you can utilize so for instance i could search for um you know, if I search for vector icons, for instance, I'm gonna get a ton of resources that I could utilize, both paid and free. So I could do 
paid resources, paid and free, or I could even look at just free resources. So I'm looking for free resources and look at all these different icons that I can pull in. Look, I've got a social media uh, app icon vector pack. I've got hand-drawn icons over here. These are pretty cool. I'm going to click on this. It's a free download. I can just click open in Figma, click that button, and all of a sudden I'm able to see all these hand-drawn vector design assets. So we're going to zoom in here and take a look at this little arrow right here. Uh, do spotlight search. Okay, we got this arrow right here, right? So I've got this vector. I can double click on it. Look at all those anchor points. So this is a vector. It's scalable. I can make edits to it. I can even just quickly adjust the fill of it if I want to. So this is a pretty incredible software with an incredible community of assets and resources that is for free. You just don't see this with any other design software. Once again, click that link in the description or try Figma out for yourself because you're going to fall in love with it. And this is used at the highest level at companies like Netflix, Microsoft, Airbnb. This is a great learning opportunity for you. If you're starting out and you're not able to purchase design software, start with Figma because people already use this. This is already a professionally used software by some of the most major companies in the world. So click that link and get started with Figma for free.